Hi, this is Elliot Middleton, and I want to help you get more value out of the detailed operational data you have on your control network using Aviva Insight. And one of the main things you have to overcome to be able to do that is the network architecture that you're dealing with. So first of all, let's talk about some of the common network security tools. A firewall is typically used to block outside access to your network at the corporate level and on the control network. It's mostly about that inbound access, but you can also block outbound access. It's typically restricted based on protocol and ports, can be restricted by IP address, but typically is not. That's not real reliable on the internet, for example. It's, it's better to use name-based restrictions. And for that, that's where a proxy comes in. So a web proxy is used to restrict access to particular sites, normally based on the domain name. It can also be used to filter particular kinds of content for example, blocking Java-based applications, ActiveX, Flash, as well as particular sites. So here's the typical corporate network architecture. All of my examples here are IPv4. Same kinds of things apply to IPv6 network. You have a firewall with the public IP address or name in this case, an internal address on the company network. The firewall would block the outside access coming in, and it would be common for particular machines on the business network not to have any direct access to the internet, but to require them to go through this web proxy. And it would only allow uh, secure HTTP connections outbound, perhaps. And then this machine on the network would be configured to use a proxy. In this case, it would point to that corporate proxy and route all HTTP requests through that before it gets to the internet. There are several ways that you can configure a proxy. One way is with explicit proxy settings, like what you see here. It can also be with a, a script, or your network can be set up to auto-configure it. See, there are actually three proxies to consider. So this is a user-based proxy that's configured in the internet options in Windows. There's also a default system proxy that you can set with a command line, such as the one given here, a few other options as well. And some applications will have their own explicit proxy settings. We'll come back to that a little bit later. So how does this work with a control network that has all your instrumentation, control system, supervisory control, and that's on an isolated network? It's a different subnet. The way you would bridge this with the business network is having an, another network in between that we call a DMZ or demilitarized zone as in the area between North and South Korea. Just as in the Korean case, the DMZ is neither in North Korea nor in South Korea. In this case, this is a network that's neither on the business network nor on the control network. So it's a different subnet, as you see here. And the basic philosophy here is that we move from the more secure network environment, the control network, through to the internet, the public least secure network. And then we'd have a firewall between the business network and the DMZ, and also one between the DMZ and the control network. And this is the basic recommendations from, from NIST and for NERC SIP compliance. They go further to suggest that these two firewalls are different vendors. That's to reduce the risk of configuration errors being duplicated across both systems. And as you see here, these firewalls have a, an IP address within the DMZ and then one on the, the other network that they're part of. And then I'd have a system here that's in this DMZ network. To bridge the, the networks, I can set up a proxy, a web proxy here in the DMZ on one of the computers there and use it to route requests from the control network to the internet via the corporate proxy here. The way this would work is a system here on the control network would need port 8080 access to this DMZ machine, and then the DMZ machine would need port 8088 access to the corporate proxy up here. Any web proxy will work. There's some open source ones that are available. The big challenge with using a proxy like this, though, is that you have to take on the responsibility of managing the blacklist, all the sites that are blocked, or the whitelist, all the sites that are allowed. You have to keep it up to date and get it correct. One of the things we thought was important to provide a solution that really addresses those problems, and we call it DMZ Secure Link. Uh, this is a free download from Aviva Insight, and, and Aviva takes on that responsibility of managing the whitelist. We keep it as narrow as possible to still support Aviva Insight. We block things like Windows updates, malware sites, basically anything that's not strictly required for Aviva Insight. And then we digitally sign that whitelist to prevent tampering. 
We automatically update it as needed so that you just don't have to worry about it. So let's look how you would configure this. Once I install DMZ Secure Link, I can configure which IP addresses it listens on and the port that it uses. And then if there's an upstream proxy, this corporate proxy, I can configure that as the forward proxy it will use to get to the internet. So that would be my corporate proxy. Specify that in DMZ Secure Link in the configuration. And then on the publishing side, in the publisher, I can also specify a proxy. And for that proxy, I'll reference the DMZ Secure Link. When we talk about the proxy, there are really two proxy settings that apply on the publishing side. The one we just mentioned here is used by the runtime. That's configured in the publisher itself. Older versions of Wonder War Historian don't have this proxy setting as part of the setup wizard. So you may need to specify the proxy in a configuration file. Look online for details about that. Then the publisher's interactive configuration also needs a proxy to be able to get to the internet. And that would use your user proxy that's configured in Windows. It's real common to run into some kind of problems because you have a lot of network protections here. And there may be some other layers of protection that you missed. So when we talk about a firewall, it may be the Windows firewall. That's important to configure correctly and allow the access. But there may also be some security appliance or other hardware firewall that you have to configure correctly. It's often tr a challenge to figure out what all is being blocked and where. So here's an example PowerShell script that you can use on the publishing system to try to connect to the proxy, DMZ Secure Link in this case. In addition to blocking ports, you might have problems with network routing. Make sure the gateway is set up to forward to the next subnet. This test net connection command will help diagnose both of those. Once you confirm that you can reach that proxy, then you can also try from the proxy node to get to the corporate proxy. Make sure that connection is working correctly. Similar PowerShell script there. Once that's successful, then we'll try the actual HTTP request, kind of going in the reverse order. So from the DMZ Secure Link node, see if you can make it all the way to the internet through that corporate proxy. Although all of the communications with the Viva Insight and from the publisher are encrypted over HTTPS, it can still be useful to test with HTTP, and that eliminates encryption as one of the problems. We have increased the level of encryption that's required by Aviva Insight, and some older systems don't support that by default. This request has two flavors. One is an insecure request. This is just to eliminate the TLS encryption as a potential problem. And then the secure version, which is what actually would be used by the, by the publisher runtime. Then do the same kind of test from the publishing node, referencing the DMZ secure link node as the proxy. Now, in all of these cases, we're using an explicit proxy configuration to reference the proxy that we intend. Once you get that working, you want to make sure that the operating system default and user proxy settings are consistent with that. And here's kind of a summary of, of those tests. Some of those tests that you can use in PowerShell to help diagnose any problems you may find. Some of these tests are only valid from the publisher node and some only from the DMZ secure link node and those are color-coded here. Thank you very much.